If there is a condition that certainly doesn't go unnoticed, that is goiter. Goiter is an enlargement of the thyroid gland that results in a very noticeable swelling of the neck. At the beginning of the last century, there were some geographical areas where the incidence of goiter was much, much higher than average, such as the Midwestern United States or in the mountains in northern Italy. So during World War I, a team of researchers set out to find what was it that these areas had in common and that could possibly explain the higher incidence of this condition. One thing they found consistently is that soils in these areas had a very low iodine content. Without really understanding the exact mechanisms why iodine deficiency could lead to goiter, they just tried to give some extra iodine to some children in this area. And lo and behold, this was all was needed to prevent goiter. Today we know that one of the main tasks of the thyroid gland is to trap iodine from the bloodstream, because iodine is an essential component of the thyroid hormones, together with the amino acid tyrosine. If iodine is deficient, the thyroid gland will enlarge more and more, driven by the pituitary hormone TSH, in a desperate attempt to catch more iodine. If goiter is the most striking consequence of iodine deficiency, there are many other that are far more sinister. Thyroid hormones are needed for growth and development of all parts of the body, including the brain and the myelin sheath that protects our nerves. Iodine deficiency in infants can thus result in stunted growth and irreversible mental retardation, a condition known as cretinism. On top of that, by increasing its efforts at iodine uptake, the thyroid gland will also increase the uptake of radioactive iodine that may be present in the environment as a contaminant, thus increasing the risk of thyroid cancer. It is for this reason that iodine supplements are recommended in areas hit by radionuclear contamination so that the thyroid gland gets saturated with supplemental iodine and will be less motivated to uptake iodine from the environment. Marginal deficiencies of iodine will not result in such dramatic consequences, but will result in hypothyroidism, that is, a lower than normal production of thyroid hormones. The active thyroid hormone sets the pace of our body's metabolism, and so if iodine is deficient, will have a sluggish metabolic rate, a tendency to gain weight easily, and difficulties in body temperature regulations, such as extra sensitivity to cold, together with a feeling of general fatigue, weakness, and lethargy. The world's major source of iodine is the ocean. Among people living in coastal areas, eating fish, seaweeds, local food grown on an iodine-rich soil, even breathing sea mist, Iodine deficiency is practically unknown, but many inland areas of the world whose soil was never beneath an ocean are still plagued by iodine deficiency. Iodine deficiency remains a big problem in many areas in Africa and Asia, and goiter affects more than 200 million people worldwide. To prevent goiter, many countries all around the world require that table salt be fortified with iodine. On top of that, especially in rich post-industrialized countries, the globalization of the food supply makes iodine deficiency much less likely. The local soil may be low in iodine, but most food items on our grocery store's shelves come from many different places. Although fortification of table salt with iodine is a great measure of public health, we already know that salt is something whose intake we should all try to limit and we certainly do not want to feel bad about it because we're missing out on the iodine. There are many good alternatives as food sources of iodine, and the most extraordinary are seaweeds, such as kelp. Fish and seafood are also good sources. Iodine content in plant and animal food other than fish is variable, and it depends a lot on the composition of the soil and what the animals eat. Iodide is also used as a sterilizing agent, typically in dairy products and fast food items, as a dog conditioner by some bakeries, and is an ingredient of some food colors. For all these reasons, iodine requirements are quite easily met. A few other dietary factors need to be mentioned when discussing iodine. First, there is another mineral that we need to be able to efficiently activate thyroid hormones, and this mineral is selenium. If selenium is deficient, 
we cannot make good use of our iodine, and we will see this more in detail when we discuss selenium. And then second, there are some substances present in food that interfere with iodine utilization for thyroid hormone synthesis, such as linen marine in cassava and isothiocyanates in brassica vegetables. However, these food items become a problem only if iodine is already marginally deficient, and even then, only if we eat them daily in a high amount. If our iodine intake is adequate, we can eat all the broccoli we want without ever having to worry about interfering with iodine utilization. The adult RDA for iodine is 150 micrograms. The upper limit is 1100 micrograms. On average, just one gram of dried kelp will provide more than double the recommended daily intake of iodine. You can add it to your soups, steam it and serve it as a side dish, use it as an ingredient in many recipes, or, as a Chinese friend of mine always does, you can eat it just like that.